Hi Pauls and good to see you again. We are now going to discuss the Kolmogorov backward equation. Specifically, we are going to cover its derivation. Previously, we derived the forward equation for a general process described by the following SDE. And we know we can get the familiar processes such as the geometric Brownian and onstad hollenbeck processes as special cases of this process by just changing the drift and diffusion coefficients. We saw the Kolmogorov forward equation for this process is given by the following PDE. This PDE describes the dynamics of the conditional probability density. We have written the probability density as a function of x and t, though it is conditional on the initial value of the process. So this P represents the conditional probability density of the process going from x0 at time t0 to x at time t. The forward equation tells us how this probability changes when t changes and the derivatives on the right hand side are with respect to the forward variable x. Now the backward equation describes the dynamics of the probability density with respect to the initial time t0 and the derivatives on the right hand side are with respect to the initial value x0. Now we switch to the conditional probability as opposed to the probability density for the derivation of the backward equation. We represent the conditional probability distribution by capital P. So this P represents the probability of finding the process in an interval A given that it started at x0. And most of the time you would see this written in terms of the real number. So this now represents the probability of x at time t being less than or equal to x. And we know the probability is just the integral of the probability density. So it is the probability of the process going from x0 to z at time t integrated over all the values of z less than or equal to x. And the probability literature, this is written in a slightly abbreviated form. So the differential is taken inside the probability and hence you can view this as representing the probability of going from x0 to a small interval z summed over all such intervals. In a similar way, one can also write the probability of the interval a as integral of the probability density over the interval. Notice though, this small p defines probability density in the forward variable z here. So if you integrate the probability over the whole range of z, you will get 1. Remember, total probability equals 1. And conversely, if you take derivative of the probability distribution with respect to the forward variable, then you will get the probability density. And for the rest of the video, we assume that the probability density function is continuous in all four variables and also has continuous second derivatives with respect to x and x0 and continuous first derivatives with respect to t and t0 otherwise Newton is not going to be happy, right? Now let's recall the chapman kolmogorov equation for Markov processes. It says the probability of going from x0 at time t0 to x at time t is equal to the probability of going from x0 to x through an intermediate point y integrated over the whole range of the values that the y can take. This equation is in terms of probability. Previously in the forward equation video, we saw this equation in terms of probability density. For the derivation of the backward PDE, we are interested in the time derivative of the probability with respect to the initial variable t0. So we need to determine how the probability changes per time unit as we shift the variable t0 in infinite assembly. This is in the sense of h going to 0 but we will suppress the limit for now and bring it back when we are ready to put it to use. Now we need to simplify the expressions in the numerator. We will leave the second term in the numerator as it is and try to work around the other term. To get the expression for the first term, we can shift the time t0 by h to the left. And for consistency, the x0 will also become x sub 0 minus 1, which comes out to be 
x sub minus 1 but we need to condition it on x naught as well because this would the finite approximation of the derivative demands this isn't a big deal because the starting value is arbitrary so we can choose whatever initial value we like as long as we don't lose sight of the big picture so what this is saying is that the probability of going from x naught at time t naught minus h to x at time t is equal to the probability of going from x naught at time t naught minus h through an intermediate point y at time t naught and then from y at time t naught to x at time t and this is integrated over all possible values of y so that we don't miss any path that the particle might take it has to go through somewhere right and that somewhere is y here now we are ready to substitute this expression into the derivative approximation formula now we need to find a way to simplify the terms on the right hand side sometimes you achieve simplifications by complicating things first and that's the trick one can use here take the simpler term and multiply it by the integral of the probability density that you see in the first expression this is like multiplication by 1 by the way because the total integral of probability density is equal to 1 now the integral is with respect to y and the term outside the integral doesn't depend on the integrating variable y so it is like a constant as far as the integration is concerned and we can take it inside the integral now we can factor out this term that we introduce so we get now you can see the different terms inside the brackets have the same t's and the only difference is that the starting values are different so we have reduced the problem from two variables to one variable in a sense by the way this difference term can be viewed as the difference in conditional probability distribution of the process at time t when the process starts at the same time from two different initial values x0 and y now the term outside the brackets represents the probability of the process going from x0 to y over a small interval of length h so if we scale it by h then it would represent the probability per unit of time now if you were at x0 then you would expect that the next change in the value of the process could be made smaller than any arbitrary value say delta by reducing the size of the time interval over which you observe the process however x is assumed to be a markov process and we know that a general markov process includes both jumps and diffusion processes so we can divide the range of the displacements into two sets the part that can't be made arbitrarily small and this we know captures the jump component and the part that can be made arbitrarily small is our diffusion as we are interested in the Kolmogorov equation for diffusion processes we will ignore the jump component here this jump component will be of interest to us when we discuss the jump processes but here we are not interested in the jumps because we are restricted to diffusion now we can write the difference of the probabilities in terms of the Taylor series keeping only the terms up to the second order this looks slightly complicated but this is essentially the Taylor series of a function of one variable because the other variables are the same in both expressions substituting the Taylor series expansion and writing the integral of sum as sum of the integrals at the same time we get now the integrating variable is y so we can take the derivative out of the integral because it doesn't depend on y we can do the same to the second integral now remember we need to take the limit so the left hand side becomes the negative of the derivative with respect to t naught we get the negative sign because in the numerator we are using minus h so the finite approximation formula will have minus h in the denominator as well but we don't have the minus sign downstairs so we will get the negative of the derivative now taking the limit of the first integral on the right hand side 
we see that y minus x naught is just displacement over a small interval which is weighted by probability and scaled by the time h. So it is average displacement per unit time and that's how one defines the drift. So this is the drift term. The second term by the same logic is then the average of the displacement squared per unit time and that's how one defines variance of the displacements. So making the replacements we get the Kolmogorov backward equation in terms of conditional probabilities. Now it's easy to translate this in terms of the probability density. Remember probability density is the derivative of the probability with respect to the forward variable x. So that's straightforward as there are no cross terms or any nonlinearities to worry about. So this is the Kolmogorov backward equation in terms of probability density. And let's bring back the forward equation so that we can compare and contrast. And the two equations are easier to compare in terms of their operators, which we can easily read from the expression on the right hand side. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next.